Hi, welcome to episode two of our series of informative workshops for startups, scale-ups, those seeking investment and exit. We're drilling down in a bit more detail about protecting your intellectual property. Now, this can be anything from your trademark being your logo, perhaps it's a slogan, or perhaps it's simply your company name. These could be registered and it's very simple to do so in the UK, which then protects your goodwill from anybody using this. As contrary to what people believe, buying the domain name and the company name is not enough. You also have design rights and copyright for anything you design, particularly like fashion or books or any logos or designs that you're producing. Patents are those that are very unique, innovative and unusual products that you can actually register for a patent so that nobody can use this. This is quite expensive and an audit should be undertaken to make sure that it is patentable. There's so many different things out there that you need to consider. So whilst you do have the ability to register trademarks, you can actually register for your patents. There's also a number of common law protections such as passing off. So even if you haven't registered it, but you've been using your branding, your goodwill for several years, and somebody comes into the market, starts mirroring you, you can write to them for a cease and desist because they're passing off. They're trying to look like you and convince clients that you. So there are common law protections, but why risk it? If you can register a trademark or get a patent, strongly advise you do so. Now be really careful. If you're going to talk to anyone about your patents, make sure they sign an NDA first. If you openly bring something to market or discuss it openly, it can potentially void your patent. So do please be very careful. How do you register a trademark? It's an application through the IPO office. Often lawyers or patent attorneys will do this for you. You choose a class so you understand what you're operating in and what sector now. Maybe that's one or two or more. And you can actually look at the imminent future. It can't be too vague. You can't cover everything, but we can look at the imminent future. We do that in the UK first. And then as you expand, we can certainly look at other territories and countries overseas. What can be trademarked? Well, it can't be too generic. It can't be something too simple that you prevent other people using a word, for example. You're best to check it's available before making an application so as to not attract objections and cost money for that um, legal work to then ensue. Also, if you are looking imminently going overseas, make sure that the word is not only free overseas, but it's culturally acceptable. You do have to be ready for objections. It could be that actually all we do is go in there and compromise with the objecting partner. Perhaps they don't want you in a certain class. Perhaps we can modify it slightly. It's not the end of the world. It's just to be prepared for it. One thing to consider in this country, in the UK, intellectual property ownership only passes in writing. So if you've hired somebody to create your IP, you have staff creating your IP, or you personally created your IP, the only way ownership passes to your legal entity is through a document. So please do make sure that you consider this. It will be absolutely essential when seeking investment. Obviously, if there's any objections, it will help. And if you're exiting the business upon sale, you will want a portfolio proving that you have ownership of all of your intellectual property. If you're going to allow other people to use it, therefore, make sure you have a license agreement. You can even charge for this. Um, and just make sure that it, on the conditions that they use this IP, they report any modifications, which you may or may not allow, that they hand it back to you upon completion of whatever the fixed term is, the project is, or payment terms are. Intellectual property should also be covered in your employment contract. So anything that's designed for you by your employees working for you should be automatically passed to you for ownership. All of this gives you protection and helps with your intellectual property portfolio, which being frank is the asset of the business, it's your goodwill. So everything you can do to value it, protect it and own it is absolutely essential. It's important as you grow, even if you're a startup business very early on, that if you see anybody passing off as you, using your name, using your logo, that you actually send a cease and desist letter. You may not want to get an injunction or go to court and incur those costs at the moment, but you do need to make sure you've registered your objection. Otherwise, you could inadvertently waive that right and allow them to continue using that. Likewise, don't ignore any objections on you. As you build up your goodwill, the last thing you want to do is rebrand and pay money to address somebody else's complaint. 
We would do that by trying to check your availability of logos and names beforehand. But if there's an objection, take advice immediately to make sure that you don't get into a legal battle. Now, obviously, a lot of people are creating things through AI at the moment. They're entering into the metaverse. There's all sorts of different things, in which case IP is being used, being created. Now, this is quite a complex matter, not something that could be simply addressed here in this episode. So we're going to, in the new year, create an episode specifically on intellectual property created by AI and operational in the metaverse. So please do tune in if that is something that you are concerned about. Thank you. And if I can help in any way protect your intellectual property, please do get in contact with us. Everything we do is usually fixed fees and less litigation. Thank you.